Hi everyone, Miss Slocum here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a tessellating shape. So to create this, you're going to need a square of paper. Mine is about two inches by two inches and the thicker your paper, the easier this is going to be for you because we are going to be tracing this shape when we're finished. You're also going to need a pencil, some scissors, and some tape. It doesn't have to be clear tape, it can be any type of tape. So to begin, we're going to label the sides of our square one, two, three, and four. One and three being the sides and two and four being the top and bottom. We're going to be starting on side number one and we're going to draw a unique line that touches the top corner and the bottom corner. I don't want yours to look exactly like mine because I would like us all to have unique tessellations and it's important not to make this line too complicated because we will be cutting it out. After you're done cutting along your first line, your next step is to piece it back into your square like a puzzle. From here, you're going to take that shape and slide it through your square, just moving straight forward so it lines up with side number three. You don't want any overlap on the top or bottom. Once you have it lined up really nice, this is where you're going to use your tape and you want to attach it. Try not to have any tape that's overlapping on the top or bottom either, because that will affect the way your tessellation works. Okay, time to move on to our next line, which we're going to draw on side two. And you want to make sure that this line touches both corners and that we create a line that looks different from our first line. We're not going onto the part that we taped on. We're keeping it onto our original square shape. So we're going to cut this one out as well. You shouldn't be cutting into that piece that you taped on. And we're repeating the same step where we fit it in like a puzzle. And instead of sliding across this time, we're going to slide straight down through our square. Make sure that the top of your new shape lines up perfectly with side number four. You don't want it over to the left or to the right. You want to line it up like it is a puzzle. You don't want to tuck it underneath or on top. It should just be sitting right next to that edge and tape it together. Now when I tape this one, you'll see I have a little bit of overlap with my tape on either edge and I need to make sure that's not there. So I'm just gonna fold it over. Okay, it's time to trace our shape to see if it works. You can do this next step on any type of white paper, but I wouldn't suggest going any smaller than your standard 8.5 by 11 inches. I'm gonna put my tessellation in the middle of this paper and I'm gonna use my pencil to trace around my edges very carefully. This is where having a thicker paper really comes in handy. It's very important that you don't rush your tracing because that will affect the way your tessellation tessellates. So you want to be very careful and make sure you hit all of those edges without going underneath or over top. All right, done my first shape. Now, because of the way we made it, it should fit into itself perfectly. The whole idea of a tessellation is having a shape that fits together repeatedly with no gaps or spaces. As long as I don't flip my stencil over or tilt it, it should fit on the top, the bottom, and both sides. So I can start moving on on any side I'd like to, but I'm gonna go ahead and trace connected to the left. And this time I should only have to trace the top, the left side, and the bottom because that right side is already drawn for me. We don't wanna redraw it and get what's called a double line. Okay, it fit. I'm gonna go right on top of that or I can go on top of my original or I could even go on the side. And that's gonna be an easy one. I only need to draw two very small lines since it goes off the paper. Okay. Let's line it up to the bottom and I will trace again. I don't have to trace the top because it's already attached to the one above it. So I only need to do that right side and that left side. So I want you to continue this until your entire paper is filled. I even want you to do the edges where your tessellation tracer will be hanging off the sides of the page. Now I have sped this video up so you don't need to sit and watch me draw this in real time, but if you need to pause it to repeat any steps or just to see how it's done again, that is totally fine. 
All right, once you have finished tracing everywhere you possibly can, you will have what looks like a very repetitive puzzle. If you did this correctly, you shouldn't have any gaps or overlaps in this artwork. Okay, this is all we are doing for this week. Next week, I'm going to show you how you can take your basic tessellation shape and turn it into something a bit more interesting. Okay, everyone, until next time, bye-bye.